a uh, very warm welcome my lovely viewers it's another time again that we are meeting it's another time again that we are going to share this wonderful platform called uh, tuesday class versus job market welcome 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 if you are joining us for the first time please make sure that you visit my facebook page uh, which is uh, common sense is it common be my follower then also don't forget youtube channel is called andedo mark you can search then uh, you view the content that are there you can comment you can share then don't forget to subscribe because where we are eyeing to is a very greater place that i want us to go there as a whole crowd that will be able to earn whatever little will be sharing so thank you again for the comments I've been getting. Thank you again for the pat at the back I've been getting. Several people encourage me. Several people share a lot of um, uh, personal experiences. And uh, some are even calling for the interview. And uh, that section is coming very soon. Let's trust God for each and every step that we make. Otherwise, I want to believe that we are moving and we are going to achieve a lot. Now, today we are going to handle... Uh, uh, Tuesday class job market part six. Now, part six, uh, okay, we can call episode six part two because we did episode six part one few days ago. So if you missed that part, please make sure you visit. This was about now the interview. Part one was all about preparation, the guidelines to the interview. How are you supposed to prepare yourself? Remember, we talked about things like doing research about the specific job because we are trying to um, check on the questions that we might be asked during the interview. So we had to do proper research about the job, proper research about the the company we are going to get interviewed from then also make sure you know the timing of arrivals and all that the dress code very very important because each and every organization to some extent some give the lineup of dress code but some doesn't but personally as a person you have to be in outfits that really matches you then apart from that some of the possible questions because you have to do that then we talked about you can also dramatize uh, talk with you, uh, before your family members, before your friend, or before the mirror, so that you uh, do it practically. Suppose you will be there, how will you be seated, the posture, the tone, the language that you will be using, then the possible questions we talk about that. Then also, we talked about um, uh, what do you say, how you're supposed to explain yourself. It's not about exaggeration, but it's about trying to market yourself that was all in part one if you missed that please just go and search interview episode six part one so today we are going to do interview epi which is still episode six but now part two entering the interview room what are some of the things we are supposed to expect or how we're supposed to carry ourselves when we go to the interview room now before entering, as we enter there, remember, we talked of things that are called, for example, the dress code. For example, for men, I talk for men mostly because I am a man. I've attended and I've seen several uh, interviews when people attend, especially the men. Most of us, we care less. But let me tell you, sometimes interview is not all about even the question you are going to be asked. It's all about how you carry yourself. A uh, problem comes in when, for, for example, you have a board. All of them are going to interview you and you are going to walk in a hall. Imagine maybe uh, 5 meters, 10 meters, all along you are going to walk. These people, they will just start interviewing you from the time you are going to enter that door to the time you are going to be seated. So your walking style matters a lot. Uh -huh. Those groups of my dress, my choice. My friend, your dress matters a lot. For example, as for me, with social ethics and uh, work ethics, in some areas of experience whereby a director will just say automatically, any lady with tight trousers, not allowed. Any lady with sleeveless uh, dresses or sleeveless uh, tops are not allowed. 
any gentleman who comes for interview without the tie, you have experienced such kind of things is not allowed. So, to some extent, always do a prior research on clothing or dress code, especially Christian organizations or maybe NGOs, they read, they tend to put down the regulation on that. So for the men we talked about, uh, just make sure you have a pair of tie and a smart shirt, especially the gray uh, suit or dark brown suit can do. Don't exaggerate those bright colors and all that. Shoes, just make sure you have official shoes, not sports shoes or not gumboots or not timberland. Just make sure that. Hair, please just make sure that you have a traditional simple haircut. Leave alone those marks, I don't know, cuts, zebras and all that. Rasters, if you have rasters, I don't know, but in most cases I've seen most organizations, they don't like rasters. That's what I will say. But if it is your place, you say employment, well and good. Especially churches, they reject. A man who is doing the hair, maybe calculating the hair, you know, braiding the hair, totally even they won't allow you to continue the interview. So always make sure prior attention in terms of preparation to the interview is all about that. So for the ladies, just make sure you have some, something simple. If it's a dress, just have a dress and uh, color it well. You can go in maybe to somebody else to guide you on how to dress up. During that, try to be a little bit official. Avoid this uh, mini skirt mostly. Especially nowadays, we have type some dresses are see me through. Some dresses, you know, all those. You maybe you have a white dress, yet the bra is red in color. All your shapes and everything is seen. I'm telling you, you just be cancelled out of that interview. Make sure you are smart and look uh, yourself from the mirror and make sure you are okay with your dress code. It's too much. That topic is just big that we cannot finish it right now. Today we are going to handle some of the questions that we are supposed to expect. As you get inside the interview, please, just some simple things that are don'ts. Don'ts during the interview. When you are going to the interview, avoid things like bottle of water, don't go with it. Avoid things like chewing gum, don't go with it. Avoid shoes that are not comfortable, that are tight enough. Avoid them, don't go with them because they will make you uncomfortable. Then, um, when you are going to sit there, please just make sure that you sit on the right posture and don't always sit during the interview before you are told to sit. The best thing you can do after reaching there, you can say hello to them, you can greet them in a simple way, not hi. Hi, those are not official greetings. Just say good morning, sir, madams. Good morning, madams. If it's a group of ladies only, group of men, good morning, sirs all that then let them answer after that maybe if they are not telling you to sit you can request may i sit please or allow them to tell you to sit then when you sit just make sure you are at a comfortable don't cross your legs don't sit with very stiff with crossed hands don't uh, sit with i don't know uh, looking things like you are in a strange place looking up looking down no just make sure you have courage enough but sitting posture maybe possibly just put your hands together within your uh, legs or within your thighs in a humble way or maybe just let your hands rest somewhere on the table but have a very comfortable way that will make you you know when you are comfortable also you'll be able to answer your questions at a comfort level so those are some of the simple mistakes that many people do especially for the interview interview is very very important you might be having a very perfect cv you might be highly qualified but simple mistake during the physical interview rules many people out remember maybe the list of interview are 10 and you are looking for two and all these are qualified only simple mistake will make you this qualified make sure you do that arrive early please that one we discussed uh, yesterday um now let's look at uh, some of the questions that we might face during the interview question number one maybe somebody will ask you um why should we hire you you know out of many people out of uh, many applicants why do you think you are the best fit for our company those are some of the examples of the question you get why do you think you are the best fit maybe how can you answer such a question if you hire me it will be a great platform for me to showcase my talent to showcase my performance to showcase my leadership skills management skills be affirmative remember you are talking about yourself and you have to convince us so out of many why should we hire you for you it should be a greater platform to showcase your talent your gift your performance or your leadership skill number two reasons behind leaving your last job please these questions is very very important and that's why i keep on saying when god gives you something to do do it with all your might when you are sweeping a road sweep a road to the extent that when you leave somebody will say 
here used to live a great sweeper. Where did he or she go? Meaning that you leave a mark. Now, most of us, we have a problem. We talk negative about our current employers. By the time we move, it's like even shock off. It's like we have reached heaven. It's like we never search again. I told you in episode 7, I can remember, uh, in episode 4, I remember, I told you that my friend, these people are relatives, these people are cousins, these people are schoolmates, all these rich buddies with owners of companies, they meet, they have annual meetings, they share the ideas. So you might think that you are talking negatively about your former ex-employer, that now you are in a green pasture, my friend, this might be a cousin of the other one. They will ask you, and no wonder we have the references. So if they ask you why you left your former work or workplace, may be simple. Just say, in order to enhance my skill or in order to meet a better challenge rather than what I have met before. Or I have improved or furthered my education to the extent that I am more experienced than what I was doing currently. I wanted a further step to meet more challenges. With that one, you shall have killed a bird or you shall have killed uh, two birds with one stone. You have saved your ex-employer and also you are bringing or building your CV for the next employer. Because if you talk like Maybe you are living because they are not paying, you are living because payment is peanut, you are living because of abusive nature or a dictatorship or something like that. Don't mention such kind of things to your current or your expected employer. You will see that that is your character. And remember, we all hate staffs that are nagging. We all hate staff that are not performing. Mark my words. Now, another question that you can say, why have you been unemployed for such a long time? Some some people will say that I have been trying to apply but nobody calls me for interview since I graduated 2000 up to now I've never got any job. Imagine how many those years. Then there must be a problem with you because somebody will ask you, how comes all that time you have never been employed? Such a question is very critical also. How are you supposed to go about that question? For example, you can say, I enroll myself for further education. For example, like me, um, I graduated 2015, that's KU. Now, I can say that I did the human resource uh, management, but sincerely before God, I don't think if I've ever got the exact job that I studied, that now I'm being employed as HR. No, it has been indirect, though the same performance and duties and responsibility are almost the same. Now, in such a scenario, if I'm going somewhere to be employed direct as an HR, not administrator, though they perform the same duties, I would rather say that uh, after graduation, the year, the year that followed, I went out of the country to further my education so that all those five years already have been occupied by your fathering education. Uh -huh. I have been serving in an NGO at this capacity, not really what I graduated for. So that one will be able to overcome the challenge of why I'm not an employee. But if you say that you have been trying to apply over many years, you know, a lot of, maybe you tell them I've been applying over 30,000 application letters, none of them is called for interview. My friend, these people will be discouraged and they will just carry interview for the time being. Otherwise, already you are ruled out in their mind. So make sure you know how to go about that. Tell them there's something else you are doing as you are waiting or there's something else you are doing. Now you have got opportunity to apply for this eh, for that job. Uh, question number four, you can get, tell me your abilities to work under pressure. Yep. This question, it can come in other way round. They can tell you how good are you in beating the deadlines. They can also crown it like that. How well are you in beating the deadline? Deadline, uh, simply that one means the pressure. How are you to, to, to overcome that? Simply tell, tell them, I keep calm, I, uh, I remain focused, and mostly sometimes I take a break just to relieve my mind so that I can, can come back to continue the same work. I can also uh, do what? I can also give out the responsibilities to my juniors so that we do the work to make sure that we are under pressure. We, we are not under pressure, but we do the same work under the same schedule time at the right time, then we deliver the right purpose. Just make sure that you you remain calm and then you remain uh, focused and good, good enough, you are multi-talented, multi you can multi-tax. Just go around it and make sure you convince them 
why you can work under pressure. Then what are your expectations? What are your expectations? Your expectations from my job, for example, you are working with me here. So what are your expectations? Your expectations are like professionally advancement of the future. The reason why you left that place is because you want to develop yourself further. Are you getting that? Yeah, you want to increase because you want more challenge for better things. Are you getting that? Yeah, that's why you left that place because furthering your education means you are now better place than what you are right now. So you'll be moving next. Are you getting that? Yeah. So why do you want this better to further your job? advancement for the future then maybe question six they can ask you describe your management style maybe you are applying to be a manager you are applying to be a supervisor you are applying to be a director what are that i will be constantly keeping tab assignment work with people work with my seniors my juniors in collaboration so that i make sure that i move with my staff i develop my staff from step to step are you getting that? You develop them because apart from training, we have development. Now, a good leader or a good manager should develop the staff for better performance. Are you getting that? Next, are you a team player? Of course, yes, I am a team player. But to some extent, I like long ranging because when you want to do things very fast, you go alone. When you want to do things many and better, you go with the people. So you are both sided. Make you sure that they understand you like that. Another question, what irritates you about co-working? Co-working just relating with other people. I believe in teamwork, answer them like that. Even if I find anything irritating, I try to avoid unless it is personal or personally it affects my life. That one, maybe I can seek for guidance and, uh, and uh, counseling. But in most cases, with, with the teamwork, sharing the idea makes me sure that I avoid irritation. Then number nine, how long will you expect to work for us? Uh -huh. If you rush with this question, I'm telling you they will dismiss you because we are looking for sustainability. How long are you going to work with us? Don't say one year, don't say two years, don't be specific. Let that question be bland. Let them remain uh, ironical or may in a, in a, in a, in a in a confusing manner, they do, should not know whether you are going to be long or not. Yeah, most of us sometimes we just get a job for one year, then we disappear. As we wait for something, we're looking for a job. But don't let your directors or your employer know the exact time you are going to spend there. They will miss you. In fact, they will not employ you. They want somebody who is a producer and who is going to be sustained so that they see. Because, you know, recruitment and employment is a process that is really expensive. So they don't want to recruit today, again next month, again the other year. So just tell them, I will be here as long as I feel challenged professionally, academically, uh, perform uh, performancely and others. But before that, I am going to work until I face a greater challenge. Number 10, how do you see yourself in five years to come? How do you see yourself? Where do you see yourself? At what position are you seeing yourself? That question comes from different dimensions. Simply tell them, I see myself in a senior position. Don't say as a manager, otherwise they will think you want to topple them. Just say, I see myself as a senior leader, a senior manager, a senior position to manage the important portfolios or uh, 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 workforces within the company. Number 11, number 11, what is your weaknesses? Remember the strength. I concentrate on one thing at a time. That one with people who are perfect. That is your weakness. Your strength can be you are a perfectionist. You want each and every detail to be perfect. It's a strength and also can be a weakness. Then what is your strength? I am a quick learner and a great team player and a great performer and a perfectionist. Talk about things like that. Then what, what position do you prefer when playing at, uh, as a team? Remember they asked you a team player, you said yes. Now, within a team, what position will you wish to, to, to be? It doesn't matter. Tell them like that. If they see you are power grid person, you will rush and say, I want to be the chairman of the group. I want to be supervisor of the group. No, don't tell them that you are grid for power. Just tell them it doesn't matter where I play or role I play, so long as we all work, share, discuss, and come up with a great achieving idea. Then, uh, do you have any question for us? Many people don't do this. Please, as much as possible. The last episode we said, prepare your question. You must. 
ask them a question or just post a statement after that. Simple. When am I joining? <laughs> Remember when we were writing the cover letter, I told you the best thing you can do sometimes, you can also tell them, I'm ready for the interview, waiting for your call to attend your interview. You invited yourself for the interview. So right now again, you are now asking them, <laughs> when am I joining? Because to you, you are the perfect and you are the winning, you are winning this. So, any question? You, you ask them, when am I supposed to join? Ask them such a question. Now, there is a simple question here that I want us also to go through. Last question they can ask you. The interviewers, they read you better and they know you by the way. They have gone through your CV, they have asked about yourself, maybe references, they have called and they have confirmed. They can ask you a question. Tell us about yourself. Please, this is not about education. This is not all about your qualification of master's degrees, whether you are married or not. Stop telling them about your name, your family members, you are married, I'm a Christian. Uh -uh. Telling us about yourself. Remember, now flashback, I told you that. Talk from the company's expectation. Talk from the company's necessities. When they advertise for this vacancy, they needed a solution for a given problem. Now, tell us about yourself. In short, what are you going to offer us? Just tell them a simple question like, uh, tell them your achievement, briefly tell them about your achievement, tell them about your strength and the situations. For example, you can, by the end of the day, tell them about the success you achieved. I have been able to achieve this and this in my past company. Then uh, I'm a very strong team player, I'm a, very, a perfectionist, I'm an achiever and something like that. Then the situation, instead of talking too much that you are getting tired, just tell the interviewers that, I am looking for a company that is going to give me opportunity to meet greater challenges, to be a good team player, to be a good manager and problem solver. And the company that will also develop me academically, maybe physically and any other thing. That is what you are looking for. In short, that is you. Tell them brief about your achievements, tell them about your strength and tell them about your expectations. Otherwise. Uh, see you next time, part three, how do we finish the interview? We call them the post-interview. After finishing, after asking your question, thank them. Don't forget to thank them because you know that you are special. That opportunity you are given, any other person will have got it, but they chose on you. Thank all of them, if you know them by their name. Thank you, Mr. Peter. Thank you, Mr. John. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, sir. Thank you so and so for taking your time to interview me. I'm looking forward to joining this reputable organization. May God bless you and have a nice time. See me next time and don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to comment. Thank you so much. Let's meet in Tuesday class job market episode 6 part 3.